Okay, so Havoc, Elias and Big Noid, great to see you in Poland, uh, continuing the legacy of Mob Deep and keeping the music and the memory alive. Um, how are you feeling like touring as a group uh, and free friends uh, and touring the world and still, you know, uh, doing your thing? I mean, you know, we feel good, you know what I mean? Of course, we got to continue the legacy, you know what I'm saying? Definitely always uh, remembering Prodigy, you know what I'm saying? Never forgetting and just, you know, staying strong and giving the fans what they want, you know what I mean? And uh, what would you say is the most important thing and the message that you want to preserve uh, going forward, like the most important thing about the legacy of Mob Deep? The most important uh, legacy we want to keep about Mob Deep is like, you know, how we always keep it real with our music, you know what I'm saying? Always staying true to ourselves, authentic, and always giving them that, you know, real ho hardcore street music. And uh, I started listening to hip hop in year 2000, and I think the first song that I heard from you, like it, it, it wasn't Shrek once, it was uh, "It's Mine" with Nas. Uh, I recorded that video on my VHS tape, and I was just watching it over and over on repeat. I was mesmerized, you know, by the sound, by the by the music, uh, by the video. Uh, so, was the track special to you as well? And how do you remember the day of that video shoot? Video. <laughs> Yo. Man, that definitely was a, a, a special track to me because I, I love the sample, you know what I'm saying, the Scarface sample. Um, and the video was crazy, as you can see. You know, we was in a tropical place. You know, it was beautiful. Um, a lot of beautiful women, you know what I mean? Yeah, we was in Anguilla, you know what I mean? How'd it feel to y'all? It was crazy. Um, we knew the song was dope. You know, once we first heard the track, that when Havoc uh, sampled the Scarface, we knew it was crazy. And then for MCs like Havoc and Prodigy to lay their verses on it and then add the addition with Nas, um, it just took it to another level. And it was Queensbridge at its best. And then the video, I mean, Anguilla, you know, it's our first time there and um, beautiful place. And it was just, it, everything came together with the music, uh, being around your friends you grew up with, being in a tropical place and all the beautiful women, it was on and popping. And must I say the production was crazy. When Havoc told me he sampled that that, that Scarface, it was that, I couldn't believe it. And when I heard it, it was just poof. It was just classic. And you know what's funny is um I knew that song and the video before I saw Scarface because I was only 10 years old when I first saw it so I had no idea of Scarface the movie and, and, and then I watched the movie and the sample comes on and I was like wow oh yeah that, that's the classic that's the Mob Deep sample yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, and the song came from your fourth album, Murder Music. And it's a very interesting release uh, because uh, it, it was like ups and downs. Uh, because first it was leaked uh, and, and it was bootlegged, but then it finally became your best-selling album. Yes. Uh, so how do you look, look back on it, like keeping in mind those ups and downs uh, that, that it took to, uh, for it to see the light of day? As far as the ups and downs with the uh, Murder Music album, I always say to myself, you know, everything happens for a reason, you know what I mean? I guess it was meant for it to happen that way, for it to get bootleg. At the time, it felt horrible, but looking back on it now, it's like everything happens for a reason, and it was our best-selling album, so, you know, I can't be mad. <laughs> And uh, Noid, I got a question because you come, you both come from the same neighborhood, and I read that you actually met as kids, right? Uh, so, um, how involved were you in those early stages of, of Mob Deep uh, history? Because uh, you were featured on the first uh, album, Juvenile Hell, but uh, was it like, was it all three of you, or just a bigger group uh, hanging out together all the time, making music? Well, that, that's actually a great question. Um, Garbage the Dead, uh, Scarface Twin, that was like my partner in crime. That was my PNC. And then we all knew each other from the block, 41st side of 12th Street. Me, Havoc, the Twins, Gambino, Ty Nitty, Godfather, you know, and uh, Garbage the Dead, Twin uh, Scarface. 
he used to tell me like, yo, yo, you gotta have it in the studio. Yo, you gotta come, you know what I mean? Yo, lay down that verse that you always say to me, let them hear it, da da da. I used to be like, nah, you know, that ain't me. I just like to write. Yeah, he was pushing me. To want to, to rap, you know, with Havoc and Prodigy. And I was like, you know, I just do it because I love it. He's like, nah, if you don't, if you don't say that verse right now, we're gonna fight. We're gonna yeah. thump right now. We was in D D studio. And I said and I said the verse, Havoc and Prodigy liked it, and um it became Stomp 'em Out. And um back in them days, you know, you had we, you know, you form an album by doing like, you know, it's kind of like a Jamaican track, a party track, and then, you know, your hard track, and that's kind of one of our Jamaican style kind of uh, records and um, you know it's like 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 almost like a single off that album and then from there we just kept the vibe going uh, for years you know what I mean and just playing my role playing my part uh, learning from Havoc and Prodigy you know what I mean and and always remembering you know even after Twin Scarface passed away that kept me motivated to make me go hard and make me every time I'm on a Mob Deep album to give my best and give my all or and uh, were there ever talks of you like joining Mob Deep as the official third member, or was it ever an idea? It, I don't. Let me, can I speak a yeah, little bit? Yeah, sure, sure. I mean, it, it's hard when you like from the same projects. You grow up together. You play together. Your mom's house is, is your house. His mom's house is his house. So it's like. It's, it's not like a group or anything. It's just that you're friends. It's like you're playing in the playground and, and you're just yeah, there. No it's, it's no plan. It's like, yeah, it's like it wasn't no plan. And and Havoc, you know, he wanted to do beats. He wanted to make it. And I was doing beats. I was a DJ and, and doing, you know, wedding receptions and birthday parties in the project and DJing in the park. And he wanted to do beats. And that's what he did. And he fought towards it, you know. And as I was doing beats, you know, because I was producing, looping stuff up, you know, before I did the Life's a Bitch, Havoc was, was, was doing his demo. And I was helping him with his stuff. So he was just determined to get it done. Like, we did it together, right? Like, it, was, it wasn't a plan. Uh, no, ever a third member of right. uh, Mob Deep or anything like that. Uh, Mob Deep is Havoc and Prodigy, you know. And um, God Bless the Dead, um, Adam. Um, AD. AD. Prince AD. Prince AD. Uh, he was even, you know, almost more of a third member of Mob Deep, even before I was. But Mob Deep is, is Havoc and Prodigy. But it, when you grow together... Uh, with Adam and Havoc and Prodigy and Big Noid and LES and Nas, like we know each other from kids, from the block, you know what I mean? So it's, it's not playing, it's just, you know, everybody play their position, everybody give their all and we make it happen, we make it work. And a question, because I, I know that you met Prodigy uh, in high school in Manhattan, right? Yeah. Uh, and how did you both uh, meet P? And uh, what was your first impression of him? <laughs> oh man, it was it was like how they say love at first sight. Like you meet somebody that you respect uh, because of another person. Like me and Havoc grew up together. Our moms know one another, so we was already friends. And for me knowing Havoc and the way he is and the genuine good person that he is, he, somebody, uh, yeah. he brings somebody in. That person is family with me automatically because Havoc co-signed it. You get what I mean? So and then me and P. Uh, on his own after that he was genuinely the same you know what I mean he was the, they was two peas in the pot like he's just genuinely good people like we come from a place where it's, it could be struggles it could be tough but we always had each other's backs and, 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 it, and it's been like that from day one and from the beginning I met P it was like I knew him forever just as much as I know Havoc and the same here like I said when Havoc said this is my partner and I'm rocking with him he's in it was it, it wasn't no question everybody just embraced him and, and what about you like the very first impression when, when you two met uh, did you click instantly or was it just you know the same vibe you meet somebody and it's just vibe from the first minute um, um, when I first met P we pretty much clicked instantly you know what I mean we both had the same interests you know what I'm saying we had um, the same friends you know what I mean so when we met it was like yeah we definitely vibe instantly it was just instant you know what I mean it wasn't something that we had to like oh you know I'm starting to like you now nah, it's like as soon as we met each other we liked each other 
and um, Prodigy uh, was from Long Island. Um, and I was watching a long interview with you uh, today uh, that Vlad did, and, and you were describing how you were visiting uh, Pete in Long Island, and he used to come to uh, to Queensbridge. Um, so how different were those uh, two surroundings that you uh, grew up in and uh, how did this experience of going back and forth um, between both places influence you and strengthen your bond? Um, the two places was, they was pretty different from each other because you know, Queensbridge, you got project, tall buildings, Long Island, there's a bunch of houses, you know, and um, not to take anything away from uh, Long Island in Hempstead, where Pete was from, it, it was it was thugged out over there too, you know. But it was just a different element because it was like, you know, more concentrated in Queensbridge with all the bullshit. You know what I mean? But um, and it, Long Island is spread out. So imagine, you know, imagine, uh, you know, just uh, the mic. a whole yeah this way. And then Queensbridge is like this, all in one circle, not spread it out. So you got people. On top, of on top of people, on top of people, on top of people. So, so it's, it's a different kind of vibe. And uh, Mob Deep as a group is uh, almost like strictly associated with Queensbridge. So, uh, was it a conscious decision to, to uh, both uh, for both you and Pete to rap Queensbridge, or, or did it just come out naturally because uh, he was there like all the time with you? I mean, it just it just happened naturally, you know what I'm saying? It, you know, P was around us a lot, you know, more than we was in Long Island. So I guess, you know, P was, you know, wanted to rep Queensbridge because that's where he was from when he was with us, you know what I mean? So it wasn't, it was something that happened naturally. And Elias, you were also a huge part of uh, putting a QB on the map uh, with the classic tracks, just to, just to mention Life's a Bitch or some of my favorite, uh, favorites, How You Live In Just a Moment. So how did it feel to be a part of that whole movement uh, in those years? Well, like I said, Havoc lived on the 41st side. I lived on the 40th side. My grandmother lived on the 41st side. So when I was doing the street running around pops kicked me out i had nowhere to go so where i'm gonna go i'm gonna go to the 40 to grandma hey i need a place to stay so i stayed over there and and then try to change my ways a little bit while i was still in the streets working but havoc was doing beats and he was like yo we was he the building across he was like yo i got this npc i got this the, the, the 3000 i got the, every time he would tell me something yo i go over here this and that so i would listen and we was working together as far as just communicating and just uh conversating with each other while he was doing his travels and then if if something happened he'd be like yo you need to highlight this one this one so my building was like right there where he used to come down and go to the train station everybody else used to go to the basketball court he was going to the train station he was going to get that music off so i was like you know what i'm, I'm gonna stick around and and, and 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 highlight him and pick his brain and and that's how we became friends and then he said, yo, get these drums, these drums, we beat shopping. So we kind of kind of meshed together on the, on the production early in the games before anybody even came up. So he came up with his own sound, grimy, and then I came up with my own sound, sampling a lot of old school 80 records. So it's, it's, it's just, it's, it's memories. History. History. <laughs> it ain't memories, history. And uh, I, I got to ask you also, uh, of course, about Shukwan's part two, uh, but an interesting aspect because um, like when I first heard it, of course, I didn't understand all the lyrics word for word. Uh, but then when I came back to it like years later and analyzed it, I was like, wow, this is really hard. And uh, you also said a similar thing uh, in the interview that I watched that uh, when you finally s sat back and analyzed P's lyrics, it was like, this is crazy. Right? So do you often have this impression when you uh, go back to your old songs right now as a grown man and, and uh, like listen to what you were rapping about and like, oh, wow, that, that was crazy. Yeah, a lot of times when I go back and listen to my old songs, I say to myself, like, what the fuck was I thinking? Like, you know what I mean? Uh, and especially with Prodigy, when I listen to his lyrics, I be like, what the fuck was he thinking? We was just saying that on the way here, listening to a song that, uh, on uh, Murder Music, uh, Spread Love, Not War. 
And we both, uh, Nori was like, what the fuck? Hey, man, what the hell was <laughs> He's like, spread love to our war, because I don't give a fuck. Right. <laughs> We got, the, we got the 20 anniversary coming up for the murder music so we was just listening to the to the whole album and it was just like what the hell was on his mind right. <laughs> um, and it's also one of the most iconic beats of all time uh, shook once mm, so do you remember the exact time that you created this beat like when you were you in your living room or in the studio and what equipment were you using back then uh, I was in my room in the projects in Queensbridge, <laughs> records laying on the floor everywhere, empty, empty 40 bottles, no cover. No cover. <laughs> and all of that, <laughs> right, empty weed bags, empty everything, empty pockets, <laughs> and um, I remember making it, you know, just making it just out of pure art, and when I made it, I was, I liked it, but when the boys came over to listen to it they liked it more they was like this shit is crazy it was just another beat to me but i'm glad i made it well why because you used to always hit that power button and cut them beats yeah. off and you also produced most of the debut album for big night uh, episodes of a hustler uh, which came out in 96 So was this album born out of the same sessions as, as the early Mob Deep albums or was it a completely different separate process for this one? I mean, um, the elements uh, definitely came out of the same struggle uh, representing Queensbridge, 41st side of 12th Street. Um, as an artist, I am uh, my own man, uh, you know, my, my own thoughts, uh, my own ideas. Uh, but we share a lot of uh, ideas and the same uh, similarity uh, in, in certain things, certain aspects. Um, but uh, it is different from Mob Deep, uh, Big Noid, even though I rep Queensbridge and uh, Infamous to the death. Um, I, like I said, I do have different opinions about certain things. So it can sound <clears throat> a little bit different. But the main uh, core of it is definitely representing where we come from and, 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 and not stopping, keeping Mob Deep going forever forever and ever and ever and then it took you seven years to come back with, with uh, only the strong uh, what was the hardest part in, in making that comeback to an industry that has changed so much within those years uh, it really wasn't so hard because I wasn't gonna um, change for the industry uh, I got to a point where I knew that the music we were making uh, I got to start noticing that it was making a difference uh, to even just even if it was just one other person in a, another country. You know, um, people hit me up and or when I see them at shows and telling me how, you know, they going through the same thing I'm going through or they definitely understand where we coming from. Um, so I, it wasn't hard for me to get back in the flow of things. Um, I did get locked up, uh, did some time and uh, came back home. And luckily that uh, my fellas, my guys, L.E.S., Prodigy, you know, I mean, Havoc, they were still doing their thing, and I was able to ease way my, my way back in uh, with the support and the help of my thons. Um, but um, I also know that making music is, 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 is timeless when you make real hip hop. You know, that, that's just my opinion. Um, it's not going to take too much. It's kind of facts. You know, it's not going to take too much of me trying to do something that's not me. I'm going to keep it 100, and that's timeless forever and ever and ever and ever <laughs> and uh, one of the one of the most unexpected collabs uh, Havoc that you did um, was the 1996 collab that probably a lot of your fans don't even know about Legal Money with Shaq uh, for the album You oh, Can't yeah. Stop the Rain yeah. what is the story behind this song like uh, how did that happen um I think Shaq was like a Mob D fan, surprisingly, which surprised us at the time. Right, so I didn't even know that Shaq was, you know, into hip hop, but he was. Um, I think he contacted our manager, and we flew down to Florida at the time because he was playing for, I think he still was playing for Orlando. And we, I was bugging. <laughs> I was like, holy shit. Yeah, it was that was that was that was interesting. Still to this day, one of the biggest beds I ever saw because he showed us a tour around his house, 
and he had a round bed that was like bigger than this fucking room. I was like, holy <laughs> shit. Like, yo, I was like, I could imagine what be going on in here. <laughs> My bed is 15 feet long, 30 feet wide. Yeah. I want it to be the biggest bed in the world. And and LES for you. Um, when we look at your discography, you have countless New York classics, but you also have uh, collabs that are also like from a different planet almost, uh, Big Willie style. You produced, you co-produced a couple of tracks on that album along with Polk and Tone from Trackmasters. Uh, so how was it like uh, coming into this whole different side of the industry? Well, to be honest, like I said, back then, you know, I was doing beats for Nas and uh, Steve Stout, you know, they was managing Trackmasters and managing Nas at the same time. So I had gave Nas some some good records so they was like yo we need you on the team and it was just like just sample everything that's in your crates and that's what i did i didn't know that it was going to go this way i didn't know that will smith was going to go that way and sell 10 million and J jennifer lopez sell two three million yeah, i just didn't know i was just out there just actually you know producing and learning and i was around them they was great producers and they 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 was known for doing pop records so They kind of helped me introduce the pop world and my style to what's going on at that time. And the charts was number one. And, and you know, I won a Grammy for, you know, for Will Smith and and uh, that's thankful for them. And, and like I said, it was it was it was a great experience. Okay, so, so maybe uh, last question. What are your like favorite memories from the whole Mob Deep journey? Like uh, some positive memories that you always go back to when you need to recharge your batteries or just uh, put a smile on your face and some some uh, memories that give you strength. Um, I would say one of my favorite memories going back when I want to think back and have good moments with Mob Deep is hearing the first time that we went gold. That we had a gold record with the infamous record. Every time I think about it, it makes me smile because I couldn't believe it at the time. We worked so hard and we came from the bottom and, you know, took it to the top. Um, every time I listen to the music, um, when I hear Shook Ones on the radio still to this day, you know, 20 years later, and um, I go back and we listen to Prodigy first album, H&IC, and a lot of music that even some of the fans have never heard before, that I know that uh, in the files and um, with lock and key that I go back and I think that when well, we made this, like, wow, I can't believe we created that. So that always keep the fire under me. Um, and there's so much more to come because not only that, uh, yes, we get older, but we get wiser at the same time. And we come from a place where stars are born. Um, this is in our era. This is in our DNA. Um, and it's, we, we grateful um, where we at but it's so much more to come and we know that we have it and we have the power to do it as long as we keep doing things like this sticking together since we was kids you know coming from the same block our parents knowing one another as long as we continue that the world is ours mob deep forever yep that's what's up yep Right, so, so maybe just one last uh, quick question, uh, because you said that there's more to come, so uh, just quickly, what projects are you working on right now? What can we expect? Is it going to be music, some documentaries, maybe books? I mean, it's going to be everything, you know, books, movies, music, you know what I mean? It's just life, <laughs> you know what I mean? General is going to happen, and you never know what what could happen you know what I mean that's the beauty of it all you know what I mean so the next time I'll be speaking to you I'll be telling you about something crazy that we didn't even mention here so <laughs> it's going down right can't wait and thanks so much for the interview it was an honor it's all right with me if it's all right with you okay. big P representing from the Mob D crew it's all Mob right. D It's all right with you, big hat representing from the Mob Deep crew. It's the right with me if it's all right with you. All right, thanks so much. Representing okay. from the Queensbridge crew. I'm representing, you know I'm representing, kid, check me.